guys, what's up? Welcome back. How are you doing? I haven't made a talking video. I haven't made a video in a while. Um, and I haven't made a talking video where I sit down and talk to you guys in a long time. I feel like I was overdue for just updating you guys on what's been going on with me. You know, a little update, you know. Um, and then also it's a whole new year. So I figured I would do my annual um, like goals kind of thing. But I just kind of really want to talk to you guys and just like let y'all know what's been up with me and what's been going on. Um, nothing spectacular really. I just wanted to like check in with you guys. Yeah, so happy new year first of all. Happy 2020, it's a new decade. Um, for some of you, you've been following me since the beginning of 2010, um, which is insane to think that I've been on YouTube for 10 years um, and I am where I am. YouTube has been a huge part of my life for the past 10 years um, and I put a lot of effort into it. Literally changed my life. Um, so I just, number one, want to say that. Thank you to YouTube for changing my life. Um, and then also thank you to you guys who've been here since 2010, who've been following me for that long. That's amazing. Um, and just the fact that you're still here is like crazy to me. And then also, um, Happy New Year. It's a new year. Happy birthday to me. January 3rd. Um, that's my birthday. So I had a good birthday. I didn't, I didn't do a whole lot the day of because you guys know we usually fast the first week of the year. And so we didn't really do a whole lot. We did go um, downtown. We just went and got some ramen and hung out, me and Cam. So um, it, was, it was a good time. It was a time that we had. I am celebrating my birthday again this weekend. Stay tuned. You might see a little bit of video footage and pictures of me looking snazzy. If you follow me on Instagram, I did kind of like let y'all know that I was like a little bit absentee from social media. Not necessarily gone because I was still posting a lot because I still had like a lot of sponsor content to post in December, but I was just worn out. Um, 2019 wore me out. By the end of 2019, I was tired. Like tired is an understatement. Um, a lot happened. A lot of personal stuff in my personal life was just kind of like going haywire. Um, you know, it was just a lot of heavy stuff happening. You know, you just, life hits you and you have to deal with it. You have to be there for your family. Um, and so just a lot of that was happening in December. And so it kind of like pushed me into a place where I really didn't want to be social. I was kind of absent, but I think as like an overall 2019 was a big transitional year for me and I just learned a lot um, and me and my husband we got a lot closer we'll talk more about that in our um, anniversary video I'm sure uh, so I'll leave some of that for that video but as far as me personally my personal development which you guys know I'm like obsessed with self-assessments I love self-assessing myself I mean I'm always trying to be better I'm always trying to better my life and you know be a better person and learn where I can and grow where I can and I think 2019 was one of those years where I really pushed, well, I was really pushed and challenged to be my ultimate self um, and just kind of lean into who I am as well as leaning into adulthood and just growing up in general. But I think overall the year wasn't bad, um, but it wasn't like my favorite year. It was just kind of like confusing. It was all over the place. It was like a good year and a bad year all at the same time. It was like good things were happening, bad things were happening, a whole lot just of confusion. I do have like years in review, like I reflect on every year, every year. Um, and I give it a name, I give the year a name and I give the year like a title or whatever. And then I just kind of like, you know, give like a little paragraph about how my year went, what it happened and what did I learn. And so 2019 was the year, I talked about resilience at the beginning of 2019. That was like my word of the year, resilience. Like stating that to myself that I was gonna be resilient was almost like a challenge for myself because the rest of the year tested my resilience. Uh, resilience is not, oh, everything in 2018 went crazy, so 2019 is gonna be a good year. That's not what resilience is. Resilience is bad things happen, at least once a week. And you gotta figure out how to reroute, how to uh, get over it and get stuff done. And that was me, all 2019. So it was, like I said, confusing because it's like, I was frustrated, I was tired, I was angry, I was upset. and But I still had to like keep pushing and put a smile on my face, put some makeup on, look cute, try to slay, try to get my stuff done. Um, I think I did pretty good, we made it. I made it to 2020. That's I was just trying to make it. After like 
September, I was like, okay, y'all, I'm just trying to make it to 2020 because I'm tired. Uh, I wrote this like at the end of the year, so if it sounds kind of dark, you know why. Um, um, so 2019 was the transitioning year. It was the year of storms. That's what I put here, year of storms. Um, whirlwind of emotions. Cam and I experienced exponential growth in our love, vulnerability, and friendship. Aw, that's so sweet. I, you know, had to be there for Cam in a lot of different ways that I never really had to before. So, um, yeah, beyond that, I reached a high point in my physical health. Um, yet a low point in my emotional well-being. Um, Cam's grandma was in and out of the ICU. The year, in, the year ended with her passing and funeral, which was really hard to see because we, we, for like the last six, seven months of the year, we spent a lot of time at the hospital. And just not seeing her in the best health was kind of like really hard on us. It was, it was a lot with that, being there for Cam's mom and, and for Cam and just, you know, it's kind of rough. And then exactly a week before Christmas, she passed and then... You know, we had to get to have a funeral and we were going back and forth. You know, we went to see my family and we came back to be with his family and it was just a lot. Although she wasn't my personal grandmother, she wasn't my blood grandmother. She still felt like a grandmother to me. Overall, it kind of ended the year, not on a bad note, but like more on like a, I don't even know. Death is, death is interesting because in some cases it can feel like the end of the world, but then in some cases it feels like a new beginning. So I think that's what made it more of like a, relief because we know she's in a better place and we're not seeing her suffering anymore. In 2019, I had a lot of breakdown moments, just about things that I can't really control, which has always been like an issue for me is like dealing with things that I can't control because I'm a control freak and I like to control things, but um, kind of just like reality setting in um, because not everything goes the way you want it to. Even though I was having like some, you know, my little breakdown moments, I would immediately get back up, dust myself off, and just do what I gotta do. And I think I gave myself time and grace to be broken for a second and then get back up, pull myself together because I don't have time to just sit around and be upset. So I've, I really commend myself on dealing with my emotions in that way um, to where I recognize I have emotions, I feel it, and then I get up and get over it. And I think that is just like what resilience was for me. Like motivation can't just be emotion. Um, you have to think past emotion and a lot of times when you got stuff to do, you don't have time to like figure out how to be motivated. Get up and do what you gotta do because motivation is so like temporary. It's like you can temporarily feel motivated to do something. I feel motivated to do things maybe once a week, but I get my stuff done because I have to. Um, so, you know, resilience taught me that. It's like, just because you don't feel like doing something doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, do it. You don't have time to just sit there and be sad. So, I mean, if you're worried about always trying to figure out how to be motivated, if you're always trying to find some motivation or inspiration to do something, it can't be emotional. Your motivation should be, I need to get this done today. Like, that should be it. It shouldn't be stuff that makes you feel good. Because the thing I've learned about making myself feel good when I'm upset, I don't always go to the things that are productive to make myself feel good. And that puts me in a worse position than when I was already like not motivated um, because then I end up spending money on stuff that I shouldn't have. So I've learned to just like force myself to do things because if I try to look for motivation or like do something that motivates me, then I will waste time, spend money and do things I'm not supposed to do. So, um, you know, that's life. In 2019, I did a lot of therapy on myself. Um, I don't like go to a therapist or anything, but I, I have been considering it. I think I do a pretty good job of talking to myself. Um, so that's why I haven't been to therapy yet because I feel like I do a pretty good job of therapying, therapying myself. I don't know if that's a word. But yeah, I give myself therapy very frequently. I also have been journaling, do like voice memos. I talk to myself on my phone and record it. Um, I've made videos and stuff that I just record for myself. Um, and I'm just kind of like documenting how I feel about things, what's been going on, and it really helps me. So, and then I reorganized and decluttered a lot of my house. I'm still working on the decluttering process, but I do have a video of how we decluttered my closet. Don't know if I'll actually post it. I haven't, I never finished editing it, but I'm gonna see if I can get that finished. Maybe one day I'll upload it. But um, yeah, I lost a lot of emotional weight during that process. Don't know why I had emotional weight in my closet. Like, have you ever decluttered your house? It's very therapeutic. Like, I started crying. Very weird. Me and my relationship with God last year was very roller coastery. Um, I joined the choir, so I feel like <laughs> I feel like I took a step towards being more vulnerable openly 
um, you know, just with the way that I um, communicate with God. Um, but also, like, Cam had been preaching more a lot last year, and so I, I kind of stepped into this role of having to be more authoritative and leadership-like-esque, you know, praying for other people and just, like, being stepping in in that kind of way. Um, but also it kind of challenged me to continue to grow in faith. Um, and so I spent a lot of the year like having real conversations with God about stuff that I never really wanted to talk about with him or anybody else for that matter. And I, I you know, I will say that there were some times where me and God, I was like, I was angry. I was upset because I'm like, you know, still going through this phase of why did I get this life and why do I, why do I have to do this? Um, but I think at the same time, it, it's helping me to grow and put my faith in him because I, I didn't ask for this. I need, I literally need God to do it because I can't do it myself. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I had to learn how to be transparent and more open and honest with myself more than ever. Um, and I pray a lot harder than I usually do. <laughs> Looking back on the year, I think we worked, I worked a lot um, on trying to just be more responsible and be better at taking care of my business um, and we did a lot of that and especially with like the business side of things last year was our first year of having our business corporation um, and just like kind of switching everything over making sure that all my tax stuff was taken care of I have a accountant who does my books for me and everything and like we we talked a lot we talked like three times a week um just about finances and getting things in order making sure my paperwork is right it's just a lot of work um having your own business i don't think people realize that like being an entrepreneur and having your own business is not the easy way out at all because everything that would usually fall in a major corporation all of that responsibility falls on one individual and that one individual is me so i have to make sure that everything is taken care of i did hire a manager to help me manage um you know just the business side of things for me she's kind of helping me out in that area too so just adding somebody to my team has been really really helpful so far um just to help with contracting and pitching and things like that um, all that stuff I was doing on my own and I've learned a lot, but I also learned that I'm tired and I don't have a lot of time to be creative. So hiring people to help me be creative has been a huge help. I do have like somebody helping me with my money. I have somebody helping me with my um, brand deals, my pitching, emailing and all that goes through her now. And then I get all the time in the world that I need to be creative and I can just do the creative stuff. Um, I have a photographer now helping me out as well as Cam. And so it makes it a lot easier on me so I'm not forced to do everything at once and have all my hands full all the time. Um, so it's very relieving and I think doing going through that whole process of 2019, transitioning into this new role of leadership that I have here in on you know social media platforms in real life, both kind of balancing both um, and giving more people more space to help me out has been tremendous in relieving me of a lot of stress, you know, which I hope will in turn give me the opportunity to be more of myself. My goals for 2019 were as follows. Um, I wanted to do more creatively. Um, I did that, I feel like. I um, worked a lot with shoe brands in 2019, which was really cool because um, I, you know, I've been wanting to get more to the fashion space, but fashion can be kind of one dimensional sometimes on social media, particularly Instagram. Um, because people like the same things and I'm not like that. I like bright colors. I like sweats. I like dressing like a boy. I like sneakers. So that's the kind of world that I wanted to get more into and I think I kind of found my niche in that area. I got to work with Nike, which was cool. I did um, a whole training camp with them. That was really cool. Um, went to the Bears game with them, did a little photo shoot with them. So I had some fun with that. Um, I had a year-long car contract with Dick's Sporting Goods, which was totally random, but I think probably the coolest thing that happened to me all year. Uh, well, not the coolest thing, but one of the coolest things that happened to me. It kind of fit who I was transitioning into, and I think just being unapologetic about the fact that I like to wear sneakers a lot, um, and I don't feel forced to wear heels. Um, so I just, you know, kind of felt like, okay, this is me, I can do this. Um, and I got the opportunity to do it for a whole year, and I was contracted for a whole year, so that was really cool. That was my first, one of my first year-long contracts that I've ever signed um, where it was like a good chunk of money and I'm like dang like they really trust me <laughs> and I got to work with Adidas I got to work with Foot Locker I got to work with Fila um, so I had a good time last year working with 
athleisure sports brands which really was different for me but I liked it that's why I kind of put my focus on Instagram because Instagram opportunities were coming up for me that were really different and new um, I was doing a lot more lifestyle stuff which I really enjoy because it's a lot easier for me to promote things that I actually already use and it's easy to get and it's not super expensive you know what I'm saying like I kind of just got tired of talking about all this makeup and stuff that half y'all don't even wear y'all just be liking it because I'm wearing it um, but I, you know stuff that People actually use like Crest White Strips and Secret Deodorant and who else did I get to work with last year that's like super easy. Just brands that I use every day like is normal, you know, and I think that was really cool to me because it's like these household name brands that I use all the time that I got to work with. I worked out a lot more last year. I was really proud of myself because I said that I wanted to do more in the gym. I wanted to get more into the gym and working out and just, you know, taking care of my body. I did Orange Theory for like a month and then I quit because I couldn't do cardio. But um, I started going, I got a gym, gym membership with Cam's gym and I started working out with him. And then I started doing the thing with Nike. But um, yeah, I just really had a fun time actually enjoying my body, taking care of my body. Um, I didn't really eat as good as I could have, but I still was eating more than I usually do. So I gained some weight. And so now I'm sitting at 115, which is like a huge deal for me because I've never been 115 in my life. Got a little hip action coming on. So, you know, feel a little, feel a little cute. You know what I'm saying? I was really proud of that. And I was really proud of my growth in that area. Just not really doing a whole lot in the gym, but just staying active, period, was enough for me. I talked about Credit Karma and um, getting my credit score into the 700s. Um, I talked about that on Instagram and I will be doing a video on credit, um, just kind of like telling you guys my little credit journey and all of that. Because I was working with Credit Karma, it's kind of like stuff that has to be legal approved and everything. Um, but I will have that video coming soon. I'm talking to you guys about just finances in general and how to budget, manage your finances, save money. I'm not sure if I want to put that series here or on IGTV. I'm thinking about doing a short series on IGTV. Um, so just kind of testing out the IGTV waters because it is new and popping now. So I kind of want to test it out. So I think I'm going to do my finance stuff on there. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Just because I know last year I worked really hard on building my um, knowledge of finances and just being financially literate and, you know, getting rid of petty debt like we said we were going to do. Um, and just working on our finances in general. Um, but I did, I was able to make some of my goals there with my finance goals, so that's good. My goal, one of my goals was also to be more consistent on Instagram, which I did and I was able to make um, a lot of money doing Instagram last year because I was so consistent in working with brands and stuff. I really worked hard at pitching myself and you know, just trying to do everything the best to the best of my ability. If you guys want help with learning how to pitch, I recommend checking out Maddie James um, because all of her stuff is amazing. She helped me out a lot last year and I gotta give credit to her. I did not do it all on my own, okay? One of my goals was to get laser hair removal on my face. I got laser hair removal, no chin hair, no mustache, it's gone. Ugh. I can wake up without the pricklies and my life is much better. Got my stomach done too, so my stomach is completely smooth now. No hair on my stomach, so we're working our way down. Yeah. Now it is painful, I will say. It is painful after the first like four sessions, once you get to like fifth one, and they turn that laser up. <laughs> but we're making it through because I just want this hair to be gone. Also wanted to help Cam get more estab established in the media space, and I did that. We did like three, I wanna say like three or four collaborations together. Um, we did one for Topic Hair Fibers. Um, we did two for Bevel, which is a men's facial care line. And we did one for um, Adidas together. Um, and I plan on doing a lot more of stuff with him, working with him this year. So um, we're still building on getting him into the social media space. I think we did pretty good last year as a team. So I feel like 2020 is a year of restoration um, from just the storm that came through and blew everything down. We're gonna just pick up the pieces and do what we can to move forward. And I think part of that is renovating this house um, so I can get up out of here, continue decluttering and just have a clutter free space so I can think clearly. We want to just do better about our bodies and take care of our bodies, get everything in order that, you know, we usually do. That's always a goal for me is to continue to be healthy. 
I do want to do more fashion and styling projects this year. I want to do more IGTV series. I think I'm going to start doing more video content on IG. Um, I'm just going to do more of what I want to do on Instagram. And then when I do have long form videos to share like this one or something else, I'll post it here. But for the most part, I'm going to do like a little short mini series and behind the scenes kind of stuff on IGTV. And I want to travel more this year. Um, this year is Cam's 30th, so I do want to plan him a party, but I also want to travel more with him while it's still just us. Um, I mean, I don't know how long it'll be just us. I'm just realizing the older that I get and the more I think about it, like, okay, one day when we do finally have kids, um, things are going to change for us. And so, like, now that we're getting older, I'm realizing that I'm like, our little, like, just us phase will be over one day. I want to spend as much time with him as possible. I want to um, travel as much as we can. And also this year I want to give more. I just want to be more of a giver. I'm already a giver, I feel like. I'm, I'm giving is how I show love. Yeah, those are my goals so far for 2020. I don't really have all of my goals written out yet. Cause like I said, I need to sit down and just kind of like think about it for a second. But so far, those are my goals. So yeah, I just really wanted to share that with you guys. Wanted to share with you guys how my 2019 went, how my 2020 is gonna go, and where I'm at right now. And right now, I'm just kind of like in the middle of two spaces, trying to figure out where to go next because I feel just a little disconnected a little bit. Um, not necessarily lost, but just disconnected. I feel like things shook me up a lot in 2019, and so now I'm just kind of like, okay, God, where do we go from here? Um, so, yeah. I just wanted to say that. Happy New Year. And that's it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I will talk to you guys in my next one.